Should they ever step into the costumes of these iconic characters, we know they'll nail the role. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comic book character dream castings. Well, that's a bit of a problem. For this list, we'll be looking at actors and actresses that we think would perfectly fit the part of iconic superheroes and supervillains if they were ever to bring them to the big screen. Now, gentlemen, if you care to join me in the parlor, we will be serving white cake. Number 10, Gerard Butler as Craven the Hunter. Release me and drop all charges by 6 a.m. 6 a.m., Nick. Or what? Or I kill everyone. One of Spider-Man's most fearsome enemies, Craven is a man who will never give up the hunt, not until he skinned the spider and has his skull as a trophy. Spiders are revered as hunters, but you have proven to be easy prey. What do you get when you're looking for someone who can channel such a thirst for blood and visceral rage? Why, the man who gave us this is Sparta, of course. Madness. This is Sparta! Not only does Gerard Butler have the physique and screaming capabilities to portray the hunter, we're also pretty sure he's one of the few who can pull off that leopard skin coat look. When we crack this mountain open, all hell is gonna break loose. If this supervillain ever does make his debut on the silver screen, all we can say is that we feel sorry for Tom Holland and any other actor who might portray the web slinger in the future. I know what it feels like to be helpless. Just like when I watched you slaughter my whole family. Number nine, Ronda Rousey as She-Hulk. Would you believe I knocked him out with my charm? You need that charming bitch. Don't be so quick to write off Bruce Banner's cousin as just a poor female substitute for Bruce's alter ego. This emerald powerhouse has more than proven her worth in the comics. You cannot defeat me. Shut up and skate. Not only is she as strong as she can be, but she also has a razor sharp lawyer's mind. And who better to demonstrate the strength and charm of the green skinned beauty than Ronda Rousey? Barney Ross as well. Her skills as an MMA fighter have landed her roles alongside action heavyweights in the Expendables and Fast and Furious franchises. These parties bore me to death. There's no doubt that she could kick an abundance of ass, as well as bring a sense of fun to the role. Lest we forget, Rhonda is also an adorably awesome geek. I got the video game, I got I got it on Game Boy Color. Yes. And my first one was Pokemon Blue, and my first Pokemon was a Charmander. Number eight, George Clooney as Mr. Fantastic. You gotta walk before you can crawl. The 2015 big screen incarnation of Fantastic Four didn't receive the warmest response from critics or fans. We can't beat him. He's stronger than any of us. Yeah, he is but he's not stronger than all of us. Should the first family of Marvel ever get another chance in the limelight, we think that some major star power could reinvent Reed Richards for the better. What was that noise? The beating of my heart, you wild thing. We've seen Clooney as the charismatic Danny Ocean, the determined and good-hearted Matt Kowalski, and lovable mad inventor Frank Walker, all aspects that make up the personality of the smartest man in the world. You ain't seen nothing yet. If he can sell the science, forge a believable romance with Sue Storm, and command the screen, then this dying franchise might just stand a chance. Heck, he's already halfway there by rocking a little bit of gray. It's still it's a matter of what you do now. If you decide to go, then you gotta just get on with it. Number seven, Joaquin Phoenix as the Riddler. You would fight me. Why not? Do you think I'm afraid? We've seen the Prince of Puzzles in his campier incarnations over the years, but we think it's time he had his due as one of Batman's more dangerous villains. Throw down your utility belts. It'll be more interesting that way, don't you think? He may not have the Joker's psychosis or Bane's strength, but he has wit, resourcefulness, and an intellect to rival that of the Dark Knight. Can we help you and invite you to sit down? You look like you've traveled here. I'll see you someplace. Joaquin Phoenix has portrayed characters that are fundamentally disturbed, but still sympathetic, and he could easily slip into a character that is internally conflicted. Not to mention, give us some truly head-scratching riddles. And from here on out, I'm not gonna feel anything new. Just... Lesser versions of what I've already felt. <laughs> his roles in Her, The Master, and Gladiator more than reflect his acting range proving that he can offer up a villain that would test the Caped Crusader in a battle of the mind. Are we so different, you and I? You take life when you have to, as I do. Number six, Emily Blunt as Poison Ivy. Do you think I haven't asked these questions? Do you think you can do better? Yeah. 
Speaking of campier incarnations, Poison Ivy has yet to be portrayed in live action with a performance that demonstrates just how much of a dangerous seductress she really is. I'm sorry, I have an early meeting tomorrow, but you stay. With someone like Emily Blunt in the part, her devotion to plant life and plans of eco-domination might not come across as ludicrous as they sound on paper. Why does it matter what happens to me? Ivy's most deadly weapon is her sexuality, as she's able to entice before claiming her victims' lives with a kiss. This would require an actress to give a performance that's both arousing and terrifying at the same time. What is my sweet little fly trap caught this time? Blunt is not only beautiful, but she's also demonstrated her vicious side in The Devil Wears Prada and Edge of Tomorrow. We think she's got this covered. Find me when you wake up. What? Come find me when you wake up. Number five, Norman Reedus as Ghost Rider. Do we gotta worry about that? Now, we at Watch Mojo love Nicolas Cage as much as the next person, but in all honesty, his cageisms only served to make the spirit of vengeance look a bit goofy, when we really should have been downright terrified. He may have my soul, but he doesn't have my spirit. As Daryl Dixon in The Walking Dead, Norman Reedus not only showcases how well he can pull off the biker look, but also shows us a man on the fringes of society with plenty of inner demons. That's Johnny Blaze in a nutshell. Feel different about it? Yeah, I do. Should Marvel's flaming skull of a protagonist ever find himself in a solo flick again, we have no doubt that Reedus could bring out the Ghost Rider's more hellish side. You know, it was sort of a badass though, wasn't it? Number four, Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. Most are in agreement that Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor didn't really cut it. They need to see the fraud you are with their eyes. The blood on your hands. We've seen great actors like Gene Hackman and Kevin Spacey have their fair try at the criminal genius, but who better to take on the reins than Walter White himself? That is just, that is, that is it. Exactly, yes! While he nailed the part of Commissioner Gordon in Batman Year One, seeing Brian Cranston put his spin on the CEO of LexCorp would be quite the spectacle, since he's already shown how well he can invoke menace and fear. If you don't find out, I will put bullet in your little girl's ear. A vicious businessman who isn't afraid of squaring up to the Man of Steel, you need an actor who can hold his own, and who better than the one who knocks? I am the one who knocks. Number three, Donald Glover as Miles Morales. I'll help you finish it. I'll be like your Morgan Freeman. Should Peter Parker ever decide to pass the mantle, we'd love to see young Miles Morales accepting this role, especially if he's portrayed by Donald Glover. Okay, don't freak out. Morales keeps Spidey's better aspects, such as intelligence and signature sense of humor, which Glover has shown in abundance with roles in Community and The Martian. Right now, the Hermes is headed towards you, starting its month-long deceleration the intercept. But instead, what I'm proposing is we start accelerating immediately. Much like his predecessor, Morales has to deal with the burden of being a superhero and hiding it from his loved ones, not to mention a fair bit of family drama mixed in with the criminal element. We're not ghosts, right? Because if I'm dead, my mom and dad are gonna kill me. If this particular Spider-Man ever gets his due, here's hoping that Donald Glover is up for strapping on those web shooters. Where did you find this? It's a long story. Number two, Tom Hardy as Wolverine. You've done this before? Many times. Hugh Jackman will eventually be too old to play Wolverine, and it's still up in the air who will replace him. You always were slower than me. Give it up, Sabretooth. If we were to choose a suitable candidate to take up those adamantium claws today, it would be the UK's homegrown hard man. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll learn. You'll go insane. Not only does he have the physique for it, his comedic timing as Ames in Inception and his lone wanderer persona of Mad Max also encompass everything a Canadian mutant killing machine stands for. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. As long as he can convincingly dismember his enemies, howl like a beast, and say, bub, convincingly, we're sold. Considering Hardy's tendency to play intimidating characters, you can even toss in that classic yellow outfit, and he still wouldn't lose any of the fierceness. The shadows betray you because they belong to me. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. See you in the next life, Jane. Likewise, John. You want to get through this? 
Do as I say. Don't get going, girl. Ah. Poor Grimes. Ah. Number one, Leonardo DiCaprio as Two-Face. Which would be worse? Harvey Dent was once a suave lawyer with dreams of cleaning up Gotham. After becoming horribly disfigured, his mind practically broke, and he is now one of Batman's most ruthless and tragic enemies. I know that you have friends, Harvey. Friends who love and care about you. Harvey's friends are no friends of mine. So, need an actor for the job? Look no further than the man who can play both sensual and shattered. I wish it could always be like this. He was as cool as they come in The Great Gatsby, while roles in Shutter Island, Django Unchained, and The Wolf of Wall Street display the varying levels of damage that DiCaprio can portray. I will not die sober! Get those fucking loads! The scariest part about Two-Face isn't the scars, but the remnants of his broken mind that come to life in the form of a violent gangster. And we wholeheartedly believe that Leo could pull it all off if he were given the chance. Come on over. We got us a fight going on that's a good bit of fun. Do you agree with our list? What's your comic book character dream casting? It's not that simple. With new top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. If you lift those palms off that turtle shell tabletop, Mr. Pooch is gonna let loose with both barrels that sawed off.